Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. Today, we shall hear from LJ Duenas, the Executive Director for Alzheimer's Association. Our talk is titled, Alzheimer's and Dementia Untangled, Concern, Care, and Our Hope for a Cure. Today, we shall be made more aware of what this disease is and how many loved ones are affected by it. Welcome, LJ. Aloha, Wendy, and thank you for having us and for all that you do to raise awareness about many causes that impact our communities here in Hawaii. So yeah. mahalo. Oh, thank you too, LJ, for your great heart, your servant's heart. I know we've worked on many projects from American Heart to American Diabetes to Alzheimer's, and I'm sure there's many more causes that you will also lend your heart to as you love your community so much. So LJ, let's get started. I know you're the executive director for Alzheimer's Association. So tell us, tell us what is Alzheimer's? So Alzheimer's disease is a brain disease um, and the most common form of, of dementia. It is not a normal part of aging. I wanted to stress that. Um, and dementia is not a specific disease. It's an overall term that describes a group of symptoms. So think about dementia like you think about cancer. There are many types of cancers and there are many types of dementia as well. So there are many causes of dementia, but Alzheimer's is the most uh, common form of dementia, making up about 80% of all dementia cases. Mm -hmm. And most people who have dementia have it because they have Alzheimer's disease. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, where this term came from, Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's disease was named after Dr. Uh, Aloysius Alzheimer. He was a German doctor who first described this disease in a landmark study um, about one of his patients, Miss um, Auguste Dieter. And in the photo perhaps that is, is shown, you'd be surprised uh, to know that Miss Dieter is only in her early 50s. She can no longer speak, write, carry on a conversation. She no longer looks you in the eye. She no longer knows who she is or her loved ones are. You try to feed her and she won't know what to do with the food that is in her mouth. And this is dangerous and she sleeps a lot. In fact, all day, many days. Oh. And at the very young age, Miss Dieter dies at age 55. Wow. So it's a very debilitating disease. Um, and I can quickly talk now about what happens in the brain uh, for persons with Alzheimer's. So after Ms. Dieter passes away, uh, Dr. Alzheimer's um, does an autopsy of her brain. And in this study, he finds three hallmarks um, that we now know are the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. One, is the buildup of um, amyloid, or what we also call as plaques around the outside or spaces between nerve cells. And then also the formation of tau, or what we also call tangles inside of the cells. And this causes the brain, the brain to atrophy or to shrink, particularly in the areas important for memory, planning, and, and behavior. So, it's the destruction and death of nerve cells that cause uh, memory failure, personality changes, problem carrying out daily activities and other symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. And so, you know, LJ, do, you know, I know we see the, the two slides with the normal and a brain with Alzheimer's. What is a trigger for this to start happening? And at what age does this start happening at? So we do know that, um, the hallmarks of Alzheimer's, whether it's amyloid or tau presence in the brain can happen long before symptoms occur. Right. What causes the buildup of these proteins and abnormal tau in the brain, we still don't know. But there are many factors that we're studying. It could be environmental factors. Um, we know that what's healthy for your heart is healthy for your head. So we know that diet, physical activity, cognitive activity, is going to help in preventing or delaying the onset of, of Alzheimer's disease like it does for many diseases. Wow, I mean, she was just 50 years old and diagnosed and, and passing at 55. 
that's incredibly young because normally we think of this as an older person's disease. And so I'm sure that's why you highlighted her history because she was so young. Yes, and this is, you know, happens today. There are folks as young as 40 who develop younger onset Alzheimer's. And what's interesting is that in, in younger onset Alzheimer's, so young folks who do develop Alzheimer's disease, the, the rate of progression is significantly exaggerated. Wow. Oh, that's even scarier because you would not mm, usually even look for that sim, uh, diagnosis in a, such a young person. So, but when you're saying that when they do contract it or they are diagnosed, it just goes ra rapid through their body and they, they go down a lot faster than if they were an older person? That, that is correct. So they're... The, Folks who have younger onset Alzheimer's, um, you know, the, the rate of, of de uh, deterioration of the brain is a lot faster than those who typically would um, be diagnosed with Alzheimer's later in life. Wow. So I know that you have a big task at hand because the numbers keep growing. And I know we're going to talk about fundraising, but I just came to my mind like, come on, let's go raise more money so we can get more um, uh, studies and more knowledge about this because it's affecting our kiki. And uh, we need to make uh, an, an impact on a positive direction for that in itself, as well as taking care of the Kupuna community. So I want to ask you, how does Alzheimer's impact our communities here in Hawaii? Well, Wendy, um, Alzheimer's is a public health crisis um, across the, the United States, across the world, and of course here, right here in Hawaii. Um, it will cripple our community if we don't take okay. hold of this disease. And um, today we know that nearly 100,000 kupuna and others in Hawaii are impacted by this disease. 29,000 are diagnosed with the disease, while another 65,000 are their caregivers. Um, we also know that this is a very conservative number as we do not have a true handle of actual people with the disease as men, many people still don't know what to look out for and simply think of memory issues as a normal part of the aging process like we all have um, you know in the past right we thought that you know just memory issues were just a part of, of aging and we have seen there are a very high percentage of folks um, over the age of 100 who are very cognitively healthy. Yes. yes. Um, I know a lot of that has to be related to, of course, environmental, um, lifestyles, and then, of course, diet. And that's what we study with the Blue Zones. And why, do, why, why are they or that uh, community able to live past 100 with great memory and physical abilities? So there's a lot of studies that need to continue to be done. And I'm sure that you are all working so hard in your um, association to help us find that cure, the cause, and what should we avoid as we're growing up so that we, don't be, we won't be affected by this, um, this disease called Alzheimer's. So I know you talk about the kupuna. So what impact does Alzheimer's have on our kupuna? Well, the, the impact to our kupuna is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, we know that in Hawaii, one in three kupuna who die, dies with Alzheimer's disease. Wow. So dying, dying with Alzheimer's disease, however, is not the same as, as dying from it. Um, but even when dementia isn't the direct cause of the disease, um, it can be the final blow. So speeding someone's decline by interfering <laughs> with care, um, terrible heart disease, um, cancer, or other serious illnesses. So uh, one thing, again, if, if, if you remember one thing from today, it should be this. Alzheimer's is not normal aging. Yes, age is the primary risk factor, but age is also the primary risk factor for many types of diseases, such as diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and no one thinks of cancer as a normal part of aging. So um, LJ, can you repeat that one statement again that you want us all to remember about Alzheimer's? Please repeat it. Yes. Uh, so one thing I would like for everyone to take away from today is knowing that Alzheimer's is not normal aging. Okay. All right. So that's good to know. And that's something that we should be all aware of. And as you mentioned with the keiki, I mean, that's really spooky in my mind. So I know we have a lot of work to do. And I know that, as I said, you're going to as an association, 
work towards finding their cure. So hurry up. <laughs> Lots of work to do, I know, LJ. So can you put a dollar amount of what Hawaii shall be spending in regards to Alzheimer's? Yes. So, you know, Alzheimer's is very expensive, like many diseases, right? Uh, but this disease is the most expensive disease to treat and manage in America and right here in Hawaii. Um, costs for Alzheimer's in Hawaii can range anywhere from $11,000 to $70,000 a month. So um, it costs us about $2 billion a year, $240 in, in, in Medicaid costs, another $200 million in Medicare costs, and then $1.6 billion in caregiver costs, which is unpaid care, you know, where family members are providing care for their loved ones who is impacted by this, this disease. So it's, it's not sustainable. Um, we, we need to get a, a hold on this disease and support our kapuna and their caregivers, um, who many of which have you know, been financially burdened uh, in addition to the emotional, physical uh, toll that this disease has. You know, I was going to ask you that question, and then, of course, you broke it down for us, but I would want to surmise that the greater cost is not just the disease, but it's the care and the caregiving and caregivers around the patient. And as you said, the family members, they, they get so heavily taxed with their time spent, so they have to... Um, when usually the local families, they don't wanna um, suggest having an outsider come in to caregive for their parents or their loved ones. But in this case, because it's such a demanding um, disease, so people have to lean towards um, hiring out and getting caregivers to come in. Is that correct, LJ? Yes, yes. Or, or they decide to leave their job or they decide to take a part-time role because they can't afford to hire someone to come in and provide that support. And wow. many families want to keep their, their um, kupuna at home, yeah, so that they For can sure. eat. And that comes sure. from yes, especially um, here in Hawaii with the, the families all nested into one home and all the multi-generations in the home. But it just gets very, very tough at times. And I know many families that are dealing with this and, and trying their best, but it does get uh, trying. So anyone out there, if you know anyone having to manage this at their home, um, you know what? Ask some family member to watch and you ask the caregiver, the primary caregiver, hey, let's go have a cup of tea and just take them out for a drive. Uh, I think that's really good therapy. What do you suggest, LJ? I, I couldn't agree more. You know, I think um, that's one thing you can do to support caregivers is giving your time to provide them with respite. Yes. So, or, or go to the grocery store for them or pick up medication for them or or you know you you take um, you 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 give them a few days or I'm sorry a few hours out of the day and you provide the care for their loved ones that they're providing care for. Yes, so yes. that's a great suggestion. Yeah, some simple acts of kindness that you would normally do, but in fact you should really focus on this more so because in fact any caregivers just give them a break. You know I go to the store I buy them mochi or chocolates and just give them a I love you you know, a uh, gift and no rhyme or reason why, but just because. So I know that they promote a lot of that at the Alzheimer's Association. So we, you know, LJ, as we speak of many diseases, uh, we work together with American Heart Association, but we all know that heart disease has always been the number one killer of mankind. So where does Alzheimer's stand in this toll? So Alzheimer's disease in Hawaii is the fifth leading cause of death. It is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Um, but Alzheimer's is the only disease among the top 10 chronic conditions that cannot be prevented, cured, or even slowed. Um, but we do hope that this new therapy that we'll talk a little bit um, about later um, that has been approved for use may help. Um, we also know that while death rates for other chronic conditions like heart disease, which continues to be the number, number one killer, um, death rates are decreasing, um, but Alzheimer's disease, the rates of Alzheimer's disease death rates um, is increasing. So the figure on, on the slide that you saw earlier, about 145% increase over the past um, you know, 19 years, in Hawaii, it's actually 300%. So there's a significant higher percentage of death in Alzheimer's uh, in terms of 
growth for the last uh, you know, 20, 20 years. Uh, that's, that's, well, you're the right man behind this organization to help them and lead them through these times and work as hard as you do on anything that you're passionate about. So thank goodness Alzheimer's uh, Association has you on board with them. So congratulations for making that decision and continue on with that great work and the work ahead. So I wanna um, ask you, how can folks know if they have Alzheimer's? How does one know this? So there are, um, there are 10 signs that we uh, look out for and I'll try to summarize all of them um, for the sake of time. But if anyone is looking for information about what these are, you know, it's at alz.org slash 10 signs. Um, so they can always visit us there to take a look at those, um, the list of, of signs to watch out for. But the very first one um, is memory loss that may disrupt daily life. So one of the most common signs of Alzheimer's disease, especially in the early stages, is when someone asks questions repeatedly over and over again in a, in a span of, you know, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, the same question. Uh, forgetting recently learned information or forgetting important dates like uh, birthdays, their birthdays, uh, their work, their, their wedding anniversary. Um, so those are those that's the first sign or you know one of the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. And just to put into context, what may be a typical age-related change would be sometimes sometimes forgetting names or appointments, but remembering them later. Another um, you know, another sign is um, challenges in planning or solving problems. So some people with Alzheimer's uh, may experience changes in their ability to follow a plan, um, directions, or work with numbers. Uh, they may have trouble following a familiar lao lao recipe they've made for decades or keeping track of important bills, like missing their mortgage payment or paying their Hawaiian electric bill. Um, and what's typical age-related change is, is maybe making that occasional error um, when managing finances or household bills. Another, another sign would be difficult completing familiar tasks. So people with Alzheimer's um, often find it hard to complete daily tasks. Sometimes they may have trouble driving to the neighborhood long drugs that they've been going to for the past 30 years. Um, or organizing a, you know, a shopping list, or even how to use a mop. Um, a typical age-related change would be something like um, occasionally needing help with the microwave, or you know, using or you know, finding a channel on the remote. So those are some signs um, and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. The other um, other symptoms are also like confusion with time and place. So people living with this disease can lose track of dates. They can lose track of um, the passage of time. Um, so they may have trouble understanding something if it's not happening immediately. Sometimes they may forget where they are or even how they got there. Um, typical age-related change would be maybe confusion about what day it is, but figuring out later. So Alzheimer's disease is not forgetting where you parked your car, but you if if you even had a car to begin with, mm. so you're lost. Right. Yeah. Um, I won't go over the other signs because that would take us, um, you know, past our time. But again, if there's any, um, you know, if anyone has any questions, always give us feel free to give us a call or visit alz.org/10signs. Wow. And, you know, um, when I was looking over that list, of course, you know, we would always make jokes about, oh, yeah, brother does always, he always does that, you know, but when I listened to them and I really sat back and listened and, and went through that list, it's not a joking matter at all. And yet, you know, some of us may experience one or two of these. And I think, you know, we we're going to say, oh, maybe, and we may joke about it, but it's not a joking matter. So as I said, um, really watch your family members and your loved ones. I mean, it, as, as, as you mentioned, it doesn't matter how old or young they are, but when you notice these uh, symptoms and seriously notice them without laughing and, and, you know, making comments about it, just really watch them. And then you can more or less uh, uh, assess 
what's going on really in their lives. But um, as I said, it could be a fun list and we would always make fun of these things, but that's where, we're, where we want to end it. But <laughs> it's a true and serious issue that we have to be more seriously mindful of. So thank you, LJ, for going through that list and uh, giving us a little bit of clarification about you know, just the simple things that we may take for granted. So thank you so much. So um, what is the Alzheimer's Association doing about this public health crisis? Oh gosh, um, where do I start? We do a lot, you know, we do a lot in the community. I'm, and I'm extremely proud um, to share uh, with you that the Hawaii team, our staff and volunteers, they've done even more through this pandemic than we ever have to support our kapuna and caregivers. Um, we, of course, provide information and resources about this disease and how to access services, whether it's through the association or through our community partners. We offer programs, so we offer education and training programs for caregivers or persons who are living with this disease, or really anyone who's interested um, in Alzheimer's and other dementia. Um, topics that are typically covered, cover 10 warning signs, um, what's normal, what's not normal aging. Um, we also go over legal and financial planning because when someone is diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's disease or any other form of dementia or cognitive impairment, there are certain things that have to happen to ensure that they are protected and their family is protected. Um, and because of COVID, we've developed COVID-19 and caregiving programs to support our kupuna and their caregivers who really had to become professional caregivers because adult daycare was closed, you know, folks weren't able to come into the home to provide um, respite or nursing care because of the risk of, uh, you know, infection. So we, um, you know, we reached more families throughout the pandemic than we have ever have before. And I know that each and every one of those kupuna and caregiver who reached out to us uh, were extremely grateful. We also offer support groups. So um, like any support group, this is a peer led support group where folks, um, particularly caregivers get together, they talk story, they share challenges and successes. And they also um, help uh, decrease social isolation because they have a hui, yeah, that they can kind of talk to, call on each other if they need additional support. And we've done this virtually and telephonically throughout the pandemic, and we are looking forward to bringing this back um, in person uh, once we are able to. And I believe our target date is August. Wow. So we also yeah. offer um, care consultation services. This is individualized care consultations for families. Um, we offer a 24 seven helpline. Anytime anyone needs assistance, give us a call. Um, and we are now recently uh, working with health systems to ensure that patients have the tools and resources they need to support their patients. Wow. Wow, is that all you've been up to, LJ? <laughs> that's a lot. And that's, it's so comprehensive what you just discussed. But really what stands out in my mind is the legal counsel that you're offering, that is so um, valuable, uh, especially with these patients, because you have to catch them where they're still cognizant of their personal belongings and what they want to have done with what they have acquired. And it's so important to catch it early on. And so the legal counsel, um, that, that just, you guys covered it all. I'm so I'm so ever grateful that you guys are thinking over, out of the box about all these different circumstances around the patient. So congratulations again to to addressing that the legal counsel part. I know um, you also mentioned a little bit about this drug, Adjohan Helm. Can you just share a little bit about that drug with us? Happy to, uh, Wendy. So you know this drug, um, it's an antibody therapy. So what this means is that it targets. Um, a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease and particularly amyloid. So what this drug does is that it removes amyloid from the brain. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a cure, um, mm -hmm. but this is the first FDA approved drug that delays decline due to Alzheimer's. So this is certainly a victory for all people who are affected. But um, I wanna be very clear that this drug is only effective in the very early stages of Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. The study only shows 
efficacy in the early stages and not in the later stages of the disease. And this is why it's so important that diagnosis is done timely. Right. Uh, so, so some of the exciting um, factors about this new approval is that also there has to be a diagnostic test. Right. right? right. Currently, there's not a true diagnostic test that is um, approved by the FDA that would um, easily be used to then prescribe this, this particular therapy. Right. So we're excited. This is only the first. We know there's going to be a second and a third. And we know that eventually it's not a matter of, of if, but when we find a cure. Wow. And again, you nailed it on the nose when you said it has to be taken in its early stages. So then again, we're all thinking, well, how do we know? How is it diagnosed? So that's something that you all have to be working on rather quickly as well. The testing and the diagnosis, the early diagnosis of this um, of dementia within our loved ones. How do we know? Right? Yes, very, very true. Wow. You know, I know that um, you guys have many events coming up. Because I, as I said, let's get out there, raise more funds, um, raise more awareness. But of course, like I said, you need money for awareness and programs and education. So what are the events coming up for the Alzheimer's Association and how can we out there help you and the association? Well, Wendy, um, coming up this fall is our Walk to End Alzheimer's Hawaii events happening, happening all across the state uh, on Hawaii Island, on Kauai, on Maui and on uh, Oahu. So we urge folks to visit us at alz.org slash walk and um, you know, register for a walk in your, in your island. Um, we also do encourage fundraising, but it is free to register. Uh, this year, we are bringing back an in-person event, but we are also including a virtual component for those who are not comfortable in gathering. Um, but we're fortunate to have leaders, leaders like First Lady Don Amano Ige, who is our honorary state walk chair, our executive chairs, Dr. John Henry Felix um, with HMAA and Trisha Medieros with the Plaza Assisted Living, and our many other event walk chairs across the state that's helping us plan, recruit, and, um, uh, you know, of course, do all the logistics. Uh, right. And I'm sure you're very familiar with that because you've led amazing walk and tour events um, with the other nonprofits that you've been a part of. So. Yeah. And we're excited, and we know that people are going to come out in full force, support the efforts, and uh, we'll raise funds, raise awareness, so we can support the work that we do across um, Hawaii and the United States. Wow, and I know uh, the color of uh, Alzheimer's is purple, and we have a dear friend, Kalani Pea, and his favorite color is purple, and I understand he was very involved with the uh, Alzheimer's Association as well. Yes, he still is. He was one of our purple ambassadors this past June. Um, and Kalani Pea uh, has a very uh, impactful story. His grandmother lives with Alzheimer's disease and his connection to her is music. It's beautiful. I, I, he's I love amazing. the story. I love the story. So LJ, how can folks out there get a hold of Alzheimer's Association? Well, they could always call us, uh, like I mentioned, 24 seven at our helpline, which is 800-272-3900. Our local number, uh, which you will see on your screen um, by email or just visiting us on our website at alz.org slash Hawaii. We have a ton of information, but give us a call 24-7. We are always there to support um, Hawaii and our other Pacific uh, Island territories. Wow. And I know that you have such great media skills, so please share that with us as well. Yes. So, you know, we are always trying to raise awareness and we know that social media is powerful. So please follow us um, on Instagram and on Facebook. And our tag is at ALZ Hawaii. So please wow. like us, share us. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we look forward to supporting you and your families, uh, whether they have Alzheimer's or another form of dementia, or if they're just interested in learning more about this disease. Wow. Thank you so much, LJ. We'll have to leave it there for now. You've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo to LJ Duenas, Executive Director of Alzheimer's Association. Thank you so much for talking story with us and for sharing all this important information about Alzheimer's and the signs to look for. Mahalo, and we'll see you again in two weeks. Aloha, everyone.